All right, everyone, let's give Martin a call here. Hello, James. Hello, Martin. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. How are you going today? Not too bad. Say hi to the stream. You are live. Hello there. This is Martin Johnson um, from Infinity Wars, Lightman Studios, and we are broadcasting live from Comic-Con Brisbane 2014. Excellent. So if you want to hit on uh, your webcam there, yeah, sure. we'll get going. All right, then. The, ah, these Skype great. ads, though. There we are. Hi, Martin. Hey, how you going? All right, there. Awesome. This is cool. This is very cool. I'm very happy yeah, to see so, this. So, yeah, we are. It's all working. And, uh, yeah, this is Martin Johnson and Terimus broadcasting live from Brisbane Comic Con 2014. And um, I understand a lot of the fans have got some questions for the art department, which I'm happy to answer. So um, Absolutely. Yeah. The, this is going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. The, the fans have been looking forward to this all day. So uh, first off, thank you for joining me. Uh, really appreciate you being on the stream. This is going to be cool. Thank so you. chat, uh, really quickly before Martin and I get started, uh, my chat interaction is going to drop to zero here uh, while we have this uh, interview and discussion with Martin. Um, I'm just going to be asking the questions that we thought of earlier. So once this discussion is over, uh, I'll go back to you guys and we can you know, keep going with the stream. But for now, let's have this chat with Martin. So, Martin, how's Comic-Con going? Comic-Con's really, really good. And this is the first time I've done anything like this. Um, I've done live painting demos before, but not at any conventions. And it's really, really exciting. There's a really, really good buzz. Everybody is really nice. It's fantastic. And we've had some great people coming over to the store and they've been so positive about the game. They've been so positive about the artwork and the animated cards. And we've got some people sat right now playing. And um, yeah, it's, it's great. I'm really enjoying myself. Thank you. Awesome. Good to hear. Yeah. So what we're going to do is, and I know you and I talked about this yesterday, but I'll, I'll just go over it with you so that the stream knows. Uh, we have some questions that we wanted to ask you about what it means to be an artist for Infinity Wars. We know that there's a, a lot of differences in terms of just drawing a card or drawing a picture and how to create a character or tell a story with the artwork for Infinity Wars cards. Okay. So we wanted to talk to you about that. So the first question that we have for you today uh, is... What is your role at Lightmare? What do you actually do uh, for the company and the game? Okay, my, my role at Lightmare on paper is art director, right? Which is, um, that, that's what I do on paper. What that means in my role is that um, I'm not just management, right? So uh, I'm not just sending out emails and, and uh, passing people around. That's the last thing I want to do in my life, right? What it means is that I'm trying to keep the standards high for the game visually all the time. What I want is, is I want to make sure the cards are as good as they can be, the branding is as tight as it can be, the overall presentation of the game is as good as it can be, and I consider that my responsibility and my privilege to do that, right? And so also that means interacting with the other artists. A lot of the fans will know Pat and Shiraz because they've been on the project for a very long time. I hope that um, I've been able to help those guys improve their potential and you know we've been learning together and also it's my duty to manage the outsourcers and also make sure their standard is high and finally it's my duty to set an example to anybody that works on the game by trying to produce the best animated cards that i can paint the best paintings the best animation and like i said it's my responsibility to set that example that's what i think being an art director is all about is to lead by example Leading by example is definitely what you've done thus far, and it, it shows in the quality of the artwork, so nice work. Um, so I, I want to move on to uh, some questions that uh, myself and the chat thought of earlier. The sure. first one that we have, uh, in your opinion, what is the hardest faction in Infinity Wars to create concepts for? C concepts or card art? Bo both in the same. So creating a, a card or, or any kind of artwork for a faction, which one do you have the most challenges with? Okay, um, I think Exiles are, are, are difficult because they are not standardized, right? So they're, they are, although they're, they're harmonized by the palette, obviously, they've got that kind of pink and yellow palette, and they've got the overall theme of monsters and demons, 
the, an exile character can be almost anything. And an exile artifact can be almost anything. And an exile environment can be almost anything. And they're really sporadic and random. And I wouldn't say that, it, that it's hard, but it's, it's, um, it doesn't come easy. You know what I mean? It, you can't just mill out exiles cards. And actually, um, Pat has done most of the exiles cards in the game. And I think he's done a really good job of, of making the quality consistent, even though the faction's so random, right? Um, I think that, that Genesis and Angels are difficult to do because they involve, particularly Genesis involves a lot of machinery. So very often we have to resort to uh, 3D modeling introduced into the cards for, for cards like um, Bunny Mech and cards like, um, what's the big Genesis Titan? Uh, Ultra Unit. Ultra Unit, right? yep. Yeah, we, so we had to do those in 3D because there was no way we could, we could solve those rigid forms with rotations and stuff like that but by painting. So Genesis, although I love the faction, I love to paint the faction, they very often are most difficult to solve technically. And also uh, to solve technically is quite difficult are the Angels cards because they involve beating wings. And of course, they don't only have swan wings, they've also got the robo wings, which give you, they're full of rigid forms. So very often we have to do those in 3D. And I've definitely made a 3D model of a light caster because that weapon appears so uh, frequent, that's the only weapon the angels use, right? So that weapon appears so frequently, gets repeated so many times. I have a blender model of the light caster that I can use to render out that weapon in different situations. So technically, Genesis Angels, um, art-wise, Exiles, um, we all love we all love the Sleepers faction, but then, <laughs> sleep, they, they, but then they don't express very much variety. It's right. very hard to get to get new. They're, ways they're a bunch of dead them. people. They're a bunch of they're a bunch of robot zombies, <laughs> and, and it's very hard to get variety into a new card. So there you go. But um, right, there, yeah, I hope that answers your question. So. Absolutely, thank you. Right. So moving set to set. So let's yeah. say with the the alterations between core, the alter oops, we got the alterations between uh, rise, infestation, and ascension. Taking each transition, how how, how do you manage an art direction? going from set to set okay well mid, midway you have to understand i came into the project midway through the first set okay which was which was very very uh difficult because that they it wasn't how can i put this it, it hadn't been visually designed to, to be particularly cohesive back in that time and i don't i don't that's no fault of anybody's it was that's the that's what the inception of a project is like right it doesn't they don't always start with a with a grand design, so I came in halfway through um, through 2013 set and tried. The first thing I tried to do was harmonise the costume design. So as you know, I produce model sheets for the Flame Dawn faction, for the Genesis faction, for the Angels, and for Viror because they're uniformed factions, right? And so that was the first thing to try and basically get the like. The first problem we had was everybody painted a Flame Dawn knight a different way. <laughs> and I don't mean like slightly, slight variations, like completely different. And you can understand how, how that would have been a problem for branding, right? No, I, I, absolutely. You've got so many different concepts trying to go at the same time. A absolutely, right? So, so the, the first thing I tried to do was harmonize, and that was what I had to do for the 2013 set. When we went into infestation, that, that work paid off. So that was really, really good because people people were then painting characters for infestation with a certain amount of uh, recognizable costume elements, right? So that was really, really nice. Infestation really took care of itself. Ascension was the one where we all had to really step our game up because that was when we introduced the Angel faction. And of course, they had immense potential for animation because one, they, they fly, right? So that they, there's, you've got good um, potential for travel there. And also, they've got wings, so you know, animation for wings beating is great. The animations for the halos and those awesome weapons that the light casters that that cast this enormous leathering bolt of lightning at people and huge resultant explosions. So we really, when you when you see cards like um, Lilaria and cards like uh, Zealous Defender, they they really exploit the faction that they, we we can use the wings, the guns, and the halos to have a lot of interesting animation. So. Ascension for me was all about trying to get more exciting animation into the cards. And, and as we move on to the future sets, now I want to now that animation standard is up. What I want to try and do is, is bring the painting standard back up to basically what I want to arrive at 
is is Magic the Gathering style artwork, but with our our trademark awesome animation and combine the two. That's where we're going. You know? Awesome. Thank you very much. So, in your memory, uh, I know you didn't you didn't start uh, with the project right when it uh, was incepted, no, but true. the the idea of going from two D static imagery and taking that into becoming this this whole wide spectrum of animation and fully utilizing the digital medium. Yeah, where did this come from? That that was not my idea. I have, I have to say that was not my idea. That was that was the idea of, of both Elfie and Ian, that they decided that if we were going to do a digital card game, then there was no reason whatsoever that we couldn't animate the cards. And and it's true. And it's really what I think is is setting us apart from the competition. The fact that every single card is animated, and not just a particle system or a or a puppet warp, like actual full animations, right? And that that was not my idea. That was Elfie and Ian's idea. And credit to them because it's helped define the project. When I heard about that idea, when I first heard that all the cards were gonna be 24 frames of, of full fantasy painting, I, I couldn't believe it. I was a bit like, yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really think that's gonna happen. <laughs> and, um, but you know what? We found a way and, and that's where Pat and Shiraz were able to show me the work they'd already done and the methods they had already used with After Effects and Flash and, and they showed me how basically to, to take Photoshop paintings and, and turn them into animations. And, and, and basically I was like, yeah, we can do this. We can really do this. So past that point, I was like, right, well, instead of doing this to a, to a, a respectable level, we're now gonna do this to that, the highest standard we could possibly do it. Um, so that's what we're, what we're shooting for. Absolutely, all right. So, next question. Uh, th this is for you personally, not necessarily uh, ah. the, the Infinity Wars project. Okay. Uh, Martin Johnson, what got you to become an artist? Uh, g give us the, the inspiration behind wanting to be where you are today. That's a, that's a very good question. And, and any fans out there that are artists, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all of you because you're doing something that you want to do. Right, and that's really, really important, and, and that's that's helping me to start answering my question. Any of you fans out there who pick up pencils or, or biros or, or styluses, Wacom styluses, or, or create art of any any kind, I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourselves because that is the answer to the question. I got started in artwork because I had to. I had to do it. You you understand what I mean? There was no option for me not to create artwork when I was a kid and when I was a teenager, and when I was, was uni age, and coming up to the age that I am now, I, I can't not do it, right? And, and I won't accept any other type of work. I, don't, I won't work in a bank, I won't work at, at Macca's. Um, I'm not, that's great, if you wanna do that kind of work, superb, that's great, right? But personally, I can't do anything else other than, than paint or draw, and, and I won't, right? And that is, that's why I'm an artist today. Uh, and, and any of you fans that are artists, you don't compromise, all right? You do you do that and you try and do it for a living. And you make sure you do because, you know, it, it's the way to go. If that's what you're into, stick with it. Excellent. So so that, that whole follow your dream concept re re really stuck with you. I, I mean it. I, I mean it. And, it's, and it wasn't so much about follow my dream. It was so much about don't compromise. Don't, don't let, don't let modern life take away the things that you want to do right that's that's what i mean and, and excellent then you'll, then you'll get what you want see see guys this isn't just a an art discussion this is a philosophical discussion okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh back to uh some infinity wars questions uh, the yeah. next one was having uh, a couple different artists on the team and having to manage this team how difficult is it or or how entertaining is it to <laughs> attempt to keep a, a consistent art style or if it's not a consistent art style how do you let them flourish uh, yeah okay that that's a very good question and and like i said i came into the project after pat and shiraz but, but I was appointed as their mentor. And the last thing I wanted to do was rock in and be like, hey fellas, for, forget what you thought, we're, we're doing it my way now. I don't I didn't want to be that guy, as you can understand, right? So, um, because they'd already done so much good work. What, for, for me, it's not about a consistent art style. 
I think that, that people can do any kind of art style that they want. And I think that they should, because when you see our competitors, when you see games like Magic the Gathering and stuff like that, they, they don't have a, 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 a strict, consistent art style like, like uh, World of Warcraft does, for example. In, in Magic the Gathering, they allow the artists to express the painting styles that they want to express. I think that's a great thing. The one thing I want to do is maintain consistent quality, right? So it's not about what style you paint in, but it's always about how much effort you're putting in to, um, to create the artwork, to create the animation. And I, and I operate that same policy with the outsourcing team. Right, we've, we've, we've had some, it, it's taken me a while to get an outsourcing team that I know I can rely on. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, that, that, that I know that, that they don't have to paint in any particular style. I don't mind what style they paint in. I don't mind what style they animate in, really. And I don't mind what te techniques they, they do to use it. But what they must do, and what I want Pat and Shiraz to do, is, is to try the very best they can and, and look at the competition and keep the standard as high as they can. And that's what I do to harmonize. Absolutely. All right. Excellent. So the, the, the next question is, is a little bit uh, tricky and not, ne not necessarily uh, one that's limited just to you. Um, but when we see cards uh, like Varor Channeler, uh, car cards like Wolf that, that are out there. Um, the, the community wants to know, uh, because the card art quality over time, uh, lo looking at cards that were in IW 2013 core and looking at some of the cards that are coming out now, like uh, Pat's Flame Dawn uh, card that, that's on the front page of our website right now. Awesome, Absolutely. The, the quality, uh, uh, the progression of quality that our card art has gone through uh, and... and very, very much so similar to what we did with Brutality back in the day. Um, do, do we have plans to consider more actions along that line uh, for cards like Varor Channeler? Always, always. And it is always my policy to review old card art that we don't like anymore. Or that, or that the fan base has, has essentially rejected. Right, so we're, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that we've got a good grassroots fan base cares about the project and um, I, I, I want to listen and, and you know I agree with you I don't like Varor Channeler I don't like Wolf to be honest with you that particular artist and I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to blaze anybody is somebody I don't think I'm going to continue using on the outsourcing team right you have to understand that when an outsourcer comes to me I have to give them a chance right I have to give them a bit of a go and um, so I've done that for that particular artist I think that she's produced consistently low standard work and I think I've given her a fair shot and I, and I won't be using her again um, as for replacing those cards yes it's something we always do you can see that we've replaced um, Defense Golem we've replaced um, Viror Death Worshipper we've replaced um, Brutality we've replaced Flame Dawn Footman uh, we've replaced um, Conscripted Militia Right, a lot of cards that, that, I, that I identified as being unsatisfactory, we did replacement art for. But as you understand, as we have to keep producing new art, we don't always get the opportunity to review every single poor card that we want. Fans, you've mentioned the Raw Channeler more than once. I tell you what, I'm going to give you a pledge now. I promise personally to paint a replacement card art and card animation for the Raw Channeler. I will do it myself and I will make it the best I can possibly make it. You, you you heard it here, guys. You, you you heard it here on this interview. That's Martin Johnson's pledge to you. He will be doing Varor Channeler. You know it. There we go. All right. So you you, you have that now, chat. Go go ahead and take that back to the community. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so let's get a, a little more lighthearted. Uh. For for you personally, what do you believe is your favorite faction? So something that you really enjoy working on. There it is. There, there's the shirt. <laughs> Flame Dawn, man. Flame Dawn all the way. They're my boys. They're not girls. They're awesome. Everything about Flame did, Dawn did, is right. Chat, did you hear that? They're not girls. They're yeah. badasses. They are, um, they're absolutely badass. I love knights generally. I think the idea of tech knights is sweet. I think the idea of knights with guns and swords is sweet. And, and yeah, it's all about Flame Dawn. For me. Well, look at this. This is a side of Martin I'm not used to. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I like it. 
So and they're, and they're they're rocking as well. You know they listen to good heavy tunes. <laughs> they're 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 a, a metal faction. Yeah, they're metal yeah. <laughs> I like it. So uh, le, le, so, something you said earlier uh, regarding uh, Ultra Unit having to use uh, 3D modeling for for cards like this. So yeah, uh, and and to be honest, they they've looked amazing. And there there's one more that's coming out in order. Uh, that absolutely looks amazing along the same lines as Ultra Unit, and you, you guys will see that when Order comes out. But the that specific Genesis card is beautiful. So uh, we we know that there have been cards drawn with models, you know, cards like Ultra Unit, um, but more so a, a model like a like a person. So let's say Saculus. We yeah. we all know that that concept. Um, uh, cards like Best Fiends. Th those have models, but for the other characters in the game, do we have a model for them, or are uh, those freehand? Our, our policy is, is, is Saculus doesn't contain any 3D at all, um, and, and, and Best Fiends doesn't contain. To my, I didn't paint the card Best Fiends, but I, I think it doesn't contain any 3D at all. It's it's what our policy is to use 3D only to solve rigid forms, machine forms, right? Because I think that we've got no business doing our characters in in with three D models because that's moving too far away from the convention of fantasy art, the convention of of painting. Because because trading card games basically feature fantasy art. That's almost all invariably painting, and it used to be acrylic and oil paint. More often it's digi paint, but it very always has that traditional look, and that's what I want to go for. You're never going to get a, a 3D model of a person or a person's face to have that real traditional look because 3D just doesn't perform that way. So, um, but what you can do is you can use 3D to solve machines and machine forms and rigid surfaces because it's very, very good at doing that. So the, the best thing we, we try and do is is try and give our 3D a bit of a kind of paint treatment anyway, like hand painted textures, so that so that it's not they don't look too CG. You know what I mean? We, right. we even try and make our 3D look like traditional art where we can. Excellent. So the, there was something that, that was actually just brought up in chat, and it's I I know I've had the chat uh, with with Pat before. I don't remember who originally did. Uh, Candid head researcher. Do do you remember who did that? That was me. That was no, you. The kidding. one thing, the the one thing that has always been amazing about that specific card's animation, Is the, hand? the hand, the the fingers, they look so good. That what what done. what got you there? How'd you do that? That was done in three D. The hand is three D. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The hand is three D. So so for Candid, the the book. And, and the uh, the uh, animated text that scrolls across and the hand turning the pages is 3D because there was no way, I, I'm pretty good at drawing, at drawing figures and I'm pretty good <laughs> at drawing hands, but there was no way I could do that articulation of that slow, languid movement and do it frame by frame and make it look smooth. Like that's, that's beyond, if, if there's anyone out there who could have done that, good on you, fair. <laughs> if if there's anyone out there that knows how to do that and do it as well as Martin did with 3D, come talk to us. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll have a chat. Yeah, yeah. So I knew, I, and I wanted, I wanted that really slow, relaxed movement, a very sensuous movement of the hand, and, and Ooh, I knew sensuous so I had to, movement. to have a, a 3D model of the hand to do that. And also, what the nice thing about that was that enabled me to cast a shadow from the hand onto the surface of the book because it was done with a 3D render. So that would give me an extra little bonus there. Very you know? nice. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, if you very you nice. The, the, the fingers of the hand cast a shadow onto the book pages as they turn, so that won't turn. Excellent. So, yeah. so everyone in chat right now, that that forum discussion that's going on right now about Ultimate Miss Infinity Wars 2014, oh, you now goodness. know where Candit came from, where how Candit's hand was done. <laughs> so you, you you have to take that into consideration when voting for Miss Infinity Wars 2014. All right? Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> So there were a, a couple uh, more questions, and I, I'm going to ask uh, what well, one more from the from the chat, and then I'm going to ask one myself. Um, recent previews uh, for Order ha have suggested that potentially Infinity Wars is moving from uh, a more dark fantasy 
uh, uh, more gothic style theming towards a, a more light-hearted, brighter palette concept. Is that what's happening, or is that just what they've seen thus far? I, that decision's certainly not been made. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you there. No, nobody has talked about changing the mood of the game from one, from one mood to another. In my personal opinion, I think all different types of mood in the game are acceptable and, and valid, right? I think that probably what players are seeing is that there are less sleeper cards, right? And, and obviously the sleepers are a horror faction. There's no doubt about that, right? You can't portray the sleepers in a kind of light-hearted manner. They're a pure horror faction. And, and so, but the less sleeper cards we have as we move on, then, then the less of those dark palettes and, and um, horror themes you're going to see because of that. As for the palette becoming more bright and, and light-hearted, and, and the mood becoming more bright and light-hearted, I, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think that that's uh, that's certainly not a decision that's been made consciously. I think there's room for all kinds of theme and mood and feeling in Infinity Wars. I wouldn't want to phase anything out, right? To, 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 for me to phase something out is is not. Because we can have, you know, a horror mood. We can have a uh, an apocalyptic mood. We can have a kind of grand, a mood of grandeur for, for you know, factions like the Angels and, and for Flame Dawn. There's even comedy as well, right? We've got when we've got cards like Give Him a Jetpack. We've even got strong comedy elements coming in, and we've got comedy elements with with deflects, you know, um, uh, yeah, Jacob Herbert uh, with with deflects, right? So we've got uh, we've got yeah, we've got some comedy themes coming in as well. Not that we want to overdo that. But I personally don't think anything is being phased out. And my personal opinion with the artwork is so long as the quality is high, anything is possible, anything is viable. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, a question for, for you personally that came up as, as the last one uh, in the thread here. Uh, okay. While you're, well, you personally, while you are drawing, while you are painting, what kind of music do you listen to that, that gets you really hyped? Look, look at that. Look, look, look at the headbanger Martin Johnson here. Metal, man. Metal. Yeah. Who's your, who, who's your band? Who's your band? Oh, I, I, like, I like the classic stuff. I like, I like Black Sabbath and, <clears throat> and I like Leafhound as well. They're really kick-ass. Metallica and Pantera is where my head's Pantera, at. Pantera, Pantera is yeah. sweet. Yeah. I, I do like the stuff with a little bit more uh, melody and tone. Right? There you go. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pantera is super sweet. And, and anyone really, anybody that really kicks ass is, is all good with me. But I also, occasionally, you can't always always do that. So I also listen to a little bit of song music as well. A little bit of, of uh, good old Motown. It gives you a bit of a different kick for your day. You know? There we go. The chat yeah. chat's going like, yeah, Black Sabbath, yeah. He knows it. <laughs> Excellent. So my question for you personally. Of course. Moving from what you've done in your past, let, let's say the Fable Project, okay? Oh, yeah, Fable. Mo yeah. Moving to Infinity Wars. Yeah. How much are you enjoying what this project, in terms of creating uh, the story, the characters, uh, the presentation of all of this, is all up to you and your team? How much are you enjoying that? I love it. I love it. It's so. Great. What, what, what means the, the most to you out of that? Okay, what, what means the most to me, honestly, honest with you? Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the, the previous studios and the previous projects I've worked on, and I'm going to be super nice, because I don't, I don't believe in, in flaming anyone, and I don't believe in, in, in bad blood or burning bridges or anything like that, so I'm going to be always positive about, about the old studios I've worked in and about the old projects I've worked on. I, I, when I was worked on Fable, that was a project that kind of um, was amazing to work on. It really, really was. But I didn't have a kind of high role. I was very young when I worked on that project, right? It's a very, very old game. And I kind of had to sit by and watch people sometimes do the right thing, sometimes do the wrong thing. Do you know what I mean? Right. But, but, I, but I was very powerless to stop it because, I, one, I wasn't, I wasn't experienced. I didn't know. Uh, maybe I thought I knew better. Maybe I didn't. Who cares? The point was there wasn't anything I could do about it, right? Um, so that was working on Fable was great, but I was almost like a bystander uh, while I watched other people have their tribulations. Um, so that was that. When I when I worked on Dead to Rights Retribution, I was in a senior artist role, and that was really really amazing because 
we had a, a good team of us that contributed together. I was more concerned with character design. Uh, a good friend of mine, Bob Cheshire, who's an amazing concept artist, was concerned with environment design. We had um, a, a great creative director. We had a great uh, producer from, from the United States. We had, um, and, and everybody invested in the team really, really had a lot of fun. And we had a real party on that game. It's, it's a shame it didn't get more kudos because we, we really enjoyed it. And that was where I felt that I had more buy-in and, and um, influence on what happened in, on that project. And then coming to Affinity Wars was basically a team, a development team of, I don't know, how many is it? Like, is, it, what, is there nine of us, 10? Yeah, it, it's it's 10 to 11 on a good day. Yeah, if I, if I missed anybody, <laughs> guys, don't, no offense, I'm just, I'm just counting on the fly, right? Right. We're, we're certainly a team, a less than 20 development team, easily, right? More like 10 or, or around 10. And a, a great deal of responsibility has been placed on me. And um, that's good. That's a good thing. I, I really think this, I'm really grateful that I've been given uh, my shot are trying to do it right and what i'm going to try and do fans is, is try and do it right you know um i, I feel uh, i feel responsible for the for the visuals of the project and i want to be responsible for the visuals of the project and i, I feel really grateful that, that I, I get a chance to do that but most of all i'm having fun it's nice to work in an office where you where you're with your friends you're your real friends so um dev team big up and and it's a pleasure fellas and, and the ladies and um yeah, I have a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> what, what was that? I got a photo bomb. In my house. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who do we got? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. You, you almost got crushed there. You might want to watch no, out no, for no, uh, no, watch right. out for stray anime hammers while you're at Comic Con. Yeah, there's, there's anime weapons flying around the place. <laughs> yeah, I, hope, I hope that answers your question how I feel about working on the project. I love it. I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. Oh, that, that's a good call. So Someone in the chat just said that was the ban hammer. But look, look at what you just got hit with. Yeah! yeah <laughs> Alright, Martin. Uh, that's going to that's gonna do it. That was the half hour. Uh, this oh, has okay. been really, really good. Um, oh, so what I'm going to do is after the stream, I'm going to make a highlight of this. Uh, we'll make the highlight on our Twitch channel. I'll download it so that we can get it up on our YouTube channel. I'll do uh, that. So, yeah. so this is going to be really good. And then once it's up there, I'll make sure you have a copy of it. Uh, the the, the fans ha have definitely enjoyed this. And then once we have it up on YouTube, uh, we'll get it on the forums as well. Uh, I really appreciate you joining me today. Uh, it seems chat. Have you enjoyed this? I, I hope you guys ha have had fun with Martin here. Um, uh, obviously, he's had quite a bit of fun uh talking to you about how much he loves black sabbath and flamed on and <laughs> cl clearly there's a correlation between black sabbath and flamed on that that's obviously a thing yeah, um <laughs> all right martin uh you enjoy the rest of your comic con uh thank, thank you guys. again for joining me do you have any last words for the chat before you go uh yeah I'll, i'm gonna let you hang up because because you're you're doing the recording so i won't hang up um before i do fans thank you thank you you're, we, this is a project that demands, that, that needs grassroots support and, and hard-working, positive fans to make it work. And it's always appreciated. We can't do it without you. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Martin. You enjoy the rest of your Comic-Con. Cheers, man. See you later. Bye. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that, that was definitely good.